Good morning. I'm going to cover a little bit about what's, uh, what's occurred uh, overnight that's led us out here to the uh, Sea Oats Apartments on Plaza Lane in Atlantic Beach. About 12.30 this morning, the Sheriff's Office was called to the River Region, I'm sorry, the River Point Hospital, which is at 6300 Block of Beach Boulevard. The overnight employees were working, and they see a car drive into their, to their drive through uh, by their front door. The car stops, the sunroof opens, and a box is thrown out of the car through the sunroof at their front door. They see a male get out of the car and duck behind the car shortly after he throws this box. That obviously causes them concern and suspicions are, are very well raised. Um, male gets out of the car, goes up to the to the package, leaves leaves a diatribe, what we now learn to be a diatribe there, of uh, some issues that he had. But he messes with this box on their front porch, uh, adjusts it a little bit, again acts, reacts like something is about to happen. When nothing happened, he gets back in his car and leaves. <clears throat> Patrol officers begin to watch the video from their surveillance system and are work to identify the suspect, which they do. <clears throat> they notice the box and call our JSO bomb squad out. The bomb squad comes out, uh, renders the box safe, and finds the box contents contain items that are hazardous in nature that, if assembled correctly, could detonate and cause a hazard to human life. <clears throat> so our intelligence unit responds with the bomb squad and begins an investigation as to trying to learn the identity of the man who put the box there. Again, like I said, he had left the diatribe of his of some issues that he had with the with the hospital. They used that and some other things to identify who he was. Our partners here in Atlantic Beach Police Department came out here to uh, to this location in these apartments where we learned that the uh, the suspect lived. Uh, they kept surveillance on him. Uh, his vehicle that was seen in the video was here. At that point in time, we uh, decided that we would uh, obtain an arrest warrant for placing a destructive device on that suspect, called our JSO SWAT team. JSO SWAT team came out in conjunction with Atlantic Beach Police Department. <clears throat> they began to evacuate the nearby apartments uh, with the anticipation of not knowing what's going to happen with, uh, with this suspect. So uh, once the arrest warrant was obtained, the SWAT team uh, came on the scene. Uh, when they began to encounter the suspect, they encountered him two times at first as he exited his apartments at the request of the SWAT team for him to come out. Uh, each of those first two times that they encountered him, he was armed with <clears throat> edged weapons and swords. Uh, he made statements to the SWAT officers at that time that they were going to have to take his life. He went back inside the apartment uh, as the SWAT team was still stationed in front of his apartment. He came back outside again for the third time, uh, this time armed with what the detectives thought was another sword. He took a Bruce Lee-like fighting stance in front of the uh, SWAT vehicle. He then began to advance at those detectives uh, from that position close to where their vehicle was. Uh, at the same time now, you had one of the SWAT officers fire one round from his AR-15 at the suspect. That shot missed and hit the ground behind him. At that same time, another uh, SWAT detective fired two rounds from one of our less lethal foam ball rounds built those rounds struck the suspect and he gave up uh, at that point in time uh, was handcuffed and taken into our custody there uh, he's been charged at least now with the uh, arrest warrant that we had for him for making or throwing a destructive device and three counts of aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer uh, the officer who fired the AR-15 at the suspect and missed is six-year veteran Matt Turner um, he is a SWAT officer that's assigned to our patrol division, and our suspect has been identified as 24-year-old Christopher Bell. Uh, this is his location where he resides out here on 900 Plaza, and he's got a history of arrest with us for misdemeanor uh, drug charges and some uh, violence charges, or excuse me, some uh, driving charges. And Atlantic Beach tells us that in some of the encounters they've had with him, he's also been armed with edged weapons before. So. Uh, I know there's a lot of things that went on and took a while to, to get to this point, but I can, can try to field some questions if you have them. Can you talk about what's going on right now? Have you found anything inside his apartment? Well, at, well, right at this point in time, we're getting a search warrant for his apartment. Again, w with him being able to assemble this, this item that if he had done correctly would, would have been uh, you know, a destructive device, we take that very seriously and obviously take that very slowly. Don't rush into that. Um, so in, in addition to obtaining the arrest warrant for it, it's going to take our bomb squad some time to go back through his apartment to make sure that there's no other components that could be in there 
uh, or anything else he may have. Don't have any indication that's the case, but uh, you know the abundance of caution is, is what we're going to take. So does that mean there's still a threat in his apartment? It hasn't been completely it, it, I mean, yes. I don't know exactly what the contents are. We, we did check it to make sure there was no injured persons in there. Uh, that's just a cursory check uh, that was done. But again, to know what components could or may be in there, we don't know at that point in time. If Atlantic Beach police said they've had encounters with him before, why weren't those weapons seized? Well, it, de it depends, and I don't know the exact nature of them. Uh, I would have to assume that, that if he had been armed with them and they found it illegal, they may have made an arrest. But, but again, that's just a, a fact that they had relayed to us. He doesn't have any arrests from the Atlantic Beach Police Department for any of those weapons. So, uh, you know, I hate to, to assume that, but that would be my assumption. Was he a patient at Riverpoint? It, it seems that he was, yes. And that's part of what his, his diatribe was about, the way he was treated there and, and had issues with them before. So. Can you talk more about uh, the contents of that box? Or, uh, I know you said if assembled, it can be dangerous, but can you give us any more detail about that? It, it, it appeared as if it was a, a pressurized chemical bomb or a chemical device that, again, it, he, he didn't know what he was doing exactly with it and didn't assemble it correctly. But had he assembled those items correctly, that certainly could have could have caused some damage and been a, certainly been a threat to anybody in that general area nearby. Will his mental ability be, I guess, called into question at all since he was a patient at Riverpoint? Well, I mean, it would it would certainly be uh, a matter in his criminal uh, defense, possibly what it goes. Uh, but his actions today, uh, it you know, a, a sane person, a, a normal person acting on their normal facilities doesn't want a law enforcement officer to, to take their life, doesn't charge SWAT officers who are armed with, with guns, with, uh, with weapons, and, and that's just that's not what normal people do and people in their right facilities do. So, you know, that would be up to his, his attorneys, but he's certainly being charged with these crimes and, and has placed these, these detectives and, you know, the, the poor people over there at River Region or the, uh, the hospital in, in some form of danger. And, a sad state of affairs, but yeah, that's that's where we are. Can you talk more about the bad time you left? It's uh, a little bit about what he had had gone through before. Some of the some of the, the the ways he thought he was treated. I guess the last time he was there, kind of went through problems he had with them and with the staff. So um, it's it's part of what we'll we'll look into as as the whole part of the investigation. He did leave it, so it it did play a part. I don't think there was anything specific of that, just kind of a bit of a rambling statement. Do you know when he was there last or, or how long ago? No, I really don't. And I don't even, if I did know, I don't know if I could, could, could even tell you. I know that, that he had been there and, you know, he's associated with it because of that, but, but more details. Sure, he's being charged with uh, three counts of aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer, and that's from the events here this morning, and uh, making or throwing a destructive device. That's what the arrest warrant was for, for what he did at the hospital at 1230. And can you confirm if that red car on the right side of the apartment complex, is that his car? Yeah, that is his car. That is his car, that's that's car is, from the video. That is his car and the car from the video as well. <coughs> it's Atlanta police that led you guys here. That's how you knew that he lived here? No, we, uh, we learned that from some of the information uh, we gathered from the video, as well as some of the information that he left at the, uh, at the hospital. And just to make sure, you said he had edged weapons and swords. He didn't have any guns. No, it does not appear that he had any guns. And so you don't have a search warrant at this point, but you've been in <coughs> just to clear it. We were in to clear it to make sure it was safe, to make sure there was no injured parties inside. Came back out, obtaining the search warrant now, and we'll go back inside throughout later later today. And was it just one? I know you said was it just that one shot from the AR-15 and then the two phone rounds? Th those happened simultaneously. So. You have, I mean, you have numerous officers that, that are involved with the SWAT uh, portion of that. One of them was armed with a lethal, the AR-15, or several of them armed with lethal, some armed with less lethal, and they both fired at the same time. Okay. And are you keeping the people who you asked to evacuate them out until you're able to Until we can out? render that portion of it safe. There is a portion of the complex that we've opened back up, but the portion that's immediately near him, yeah, unfortunately, those folks are going to be out for a little bit. But nothing has been found other than the explosive left this it, nothing has been found, but again, we haven't gone through another complete search yet. So, and I, I don't know if you've clarified this or not yet, but did that officer has he had any previous? No, this was his first shooting. And is he on administrative? Leave? No, because it was a shoot and miss case. Did not place him on administrative leave. Typically, if, if there's a strike, a, a hit, or a fatality, we'll place him on administrative leave. If there's not, we will not. So.
Anybody else? All right, guys, thank you all very much.